Welcome to Grace Church Online. My name is Erin. Thanks for joining us this morning. We'd love if you'd take a minute this morning to fill out the Digital Connect card. It's a great way for us to see who's joining us this morning and also a way for you to say hello and let us know of any prayer requests or questions you might have. If you'd like to spread the word about Grace Church, click on the share button and start a watch party. This will notify your friends on Facebook about our service. Kids of Grace resources are available. In the description of this broadcast, you can find links to the Parent Q app and some video lessons just for the kids. Let's join together and point our hearts towards God in worship. Well, good morning, Grace. Let's gather together wherever we are and let's worship. Will you join me in this word of prayer? And so God, this morning we recognize your love and your mercy. Your word says that your mercies are new every morning and so we rest in your love. Thank you for meeting us where we are. You know, some of us have heavy, heavy hearts and are weighed down by all that's going on in our world. God, we pray for peace. And some of us are carrying burdens and weights that feel impossible. We pray that your faithfulness will abound and that you will make a way for us. As we sing these songs and point our hearts towards you, meet us here with your great love that we may rest in knowing that no matter where we are and no matter what we're up against, you find us out and you lead us back to you. Amen. Let's worship. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. God and oh it chases me down fights till I'm found leaves the 99 I couldn't earn it I don't deserve it still you give yourself away oh the overwhelming never ending reckless love of God I was your foe, you still your love fought for me. You have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. Yes, you did, Lord. And you have been so, so kind. There's no 
shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me There's no wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down Coming after me There's no shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me There's no wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down Coming after me There's no shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me
Church, let's join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. take a minute and let you know what's happening here at Grace. First, make sure to download the Grace app. It's available on Android and in the Apple App Store. The app will keep you in the know about everything that's happening here at Grace. If you're already part of a group, check in with your group leader to find out how you can stay connected. If you'd like to join a group, send a message to lifegroups at gracefl.org and we'll get you connected. We're collecting backpacks for middle and high school students with swag. We'd like to donate 20 of these backpacks they need to be filled with specific items in each. You can find a list of those items in the link provided below. If you or your family would like to provide one or more of these backpacks, that would be incredible. We need to have them dropped off at the church by July 19th. Thank you so much for helping to make a difference in these students' lives. We have some great ways for your kiddos to stay connected. Grace Student Ministries is meeting tonight at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Also, the Kids of Grace meet every Tuesday on Zoom at 6.30 p.m. Thank you for tuning in. We hope you have a great week. Well, hello, Grace. My name is Kevin Bruschert. I'm the worship arts pastor here. And at this time, we're going to continue in our worship through the giving of our tithes and God's offering. Um, and so... Uh, 2020 has been a challenging year, and we have been in a global pandemic, and we have not been able to meet physically. But I just want to thank you uh, for your faithful giving. Uh, we have been able to uh, continue to provide the things that, that we've been doing here online, but also we've been able to be generous and help those who have been having needs financially through this crisis. And so all of that is because of your generosity. So thank you so much for continuing to give during this season. Uh, let's pray together uh, over the tithes and offerings. God, we thank you for uh, the generosity of others, Lord. We thank you that you continue to provide for us, uh, even in the midst of questions, even in the midst of the times in our lives where we are unsure where the provision is going to come from. Lord, you continue to make a way because you are faithful and you are good. I pray that you would take the tithes and the offerings that are given to you, Lord, and that you would use those to continue furthering your kingdom. God, we are so thankful for all the ways that you take care of us, all of the ways that you provide. We pray all this in your name. Amen. Good morning uh, to Grace Church Online. We are glad that you're worshiping with us. If this is your very first time or if you have been worshiping with us for months now, we are glad that you are here. We're in the third week of a series on the book of Nehemiah called Rise and Build. I encourage you to catch up uh, on YouTube or Facebook if you've missed any of the other services. But 
we're excited about where we're headed. And if you want to dig in just a little bit more to Nehemiah, and actually Ezra and Nehemiah were one book uh, at, at one point in time, and there's uh, some links in the service description. There's about an eight-minute overview, so you can see how this plays into the larger narrative of Scripture. And for you overachievers, there's a, a link there as well that uh, lasts about an hour that does a, a little bit of a deeper dive into the book of Nehemiah, and we want to make those available to you. But I want to start by kind of catching us all up on the story, because I know that you have these lives in between the times that we meet together here online on Sundays. And so Nehemiah, he is serving in the Persian Empire. He's actually a cupbearer to the king, Artaxerxes. And he has a brother named, I'm going to call him Hanani, because I think that's how you pronounce it. And he, re, he returns to Persia from Judah, all right? So from their homeland. And Nehemiah does what many of us would do when they see their brother hey, how are things back home? And the report he got was not good. His brother says that the people in Israel are in great trouble and disgrace, and that the the wall of Jerusalem is broken down, and its gates have been burned with fire. And so, this is some terrible news. And as soon as he hears it, Nehemiah, his heart begins to break. He mourns. He begins to pray. He begins to fast for several days immediately. He was really just kind of blindsided with some, some terrible news. I don't know if you've ever been there. You're just kind of going about your day and you inquire as to how something is going. Or maybe you're scrolling through Facebook and all of a sudden you begin to see these, these rest in peace. And then a friend of yours is tagged and you find out on Facebook that somebody you care about has unexpectedly passed away. But uh, we can relate to uh, where he was. Like he was, he was caught off guard and he began to mourn for his people and for his, his hometown. And so as you dig a little bit deeper, you can begin to realize that Nehemiah actually prayed and fasted for four months. And then he went to serve the king one day and the, the king noticed that Nehemiah was sad. It was all over him. It was all over his face. And he, he inquired as to why he was sad. And Nehemiah explained to him what was going on, that his hometown was in ruins. And the king asked him what he wanted. And Nehemiah was bold. And he, he asked for what was needed. And the king gave it to him. Supplies, armed guards, the, the whole bit. All right? And so that catches us up to where we are in the story today. And, and I love this because we're going to begin in, in Nehemiah chapter 2 and uh, 11 and 12. And Nehemiah, he, he does something that to me, it sounds like a whole lot of fun. He goes out at night on a secret mission. All right, so he goes out when nobody knows that he's out. None of the, the people who are in charge know that he's doing this. He, he goes out on a secret mission to assess the situation, to see what the walls and what the gates uh, actually look like. And so I've actually asked my daughter, uh, Addie, that if she would come and, and read his little secret mission, like where he went and, and what that looked like, she's going to read it. And then we have a, a map that you're going to be able to follow along with that. By night I went out through the valley gate toward the jackal well and the dung gate, examining... Hold on, hold on, time out. All the way down here. So you just read that really fast, okay. but it probably took some time. And you said the what gate? The dung gate. Dung gate? Yes. What do you think that is? <laughs> probably true. All right, for all my middle schoolers out there, a little research project, send me an email, do a little research on what the dung gate is, send it to me by tonight, and I'll do a drawing for a Starbucks gift card. Uh, you just send me all you can about the dung gate. We're going to get you into scripture. All right, sorry about that. It's okay. Examining the walls of Jerusalem, which had been broken down, and its gates, which had been destroyed by fire. Then I moved on toward the fountain gate in the king's pool, but there was not enough room for my mount to get through. So I went up the valley by night, examining the wall. Finally, I turned back and re-entered through the valley gate. Thank you very, very, very much. I'll take that. And so he, he, he did this secret mission, and he, he was on a horse. Nobody knew that he was out there. They didn't know uh, what he was doing, but he, he took inventory. And, and just so that you know, like as you're looking at that picture, this represents about 60 acres, uh, what is enclosed in, in these walls. And so it, it's big, but it's not just, it, it's not a huge city. It's not like Gainesville, just to put some of this in perspective for you. So he, he does his secret mission, and then he comes back, and he begins, 
begins to announce publicly that God's gracious hand has been on him, that the king himself has encouraged him to come back and to rebuild the wall. And it says that the people respond, let's start rebuilding. And so when I read that, I see like fists in the air and they're like chanting, let's start rebuilding, let's start rebuilding. That's, that's not in there, but in my mind, somebody started that chant and it just... Uh, picked up. And then he goes on, he tells us that there are some some mockers and some hecklers that show up. We're not going to dig down there today because we're going to spend all of next week talking about that. And so we move on. They, they begin the work. And chapter 3, I'm just going to be honest with you, Nehemiah chapter 3, it reads kind of like a slow news day, like so slow that they sent out a reporter to a church work day. That, that is, to me, like that is how this thing reads. And so I'm going to challenge you to read that on your own because I've already read it several times this week in preparation for today. But as you read it, I want you to do this. I want you to begin to highlight or underline or make notes of how many different people were involved in this construction project. And not just how many, but what it was they did. And so I want to pull just a couple of observations uh, out of this passage for all of us to be reminded of and to be encouraged by today. Sometimes When God calls us to action as the people of God, he requires us to leave our expertise, or you could insert in there, comfort zone behind. Okay, so sometimes we're required to step outside of what is comfortable for us to accomplish that the mission that God has before us. And this was an all hands on deck situation. I'm going to be honest with you. They didn't send out a survey and say, are you good at construction? Are you good with a hammer, a sledgehammer? Are you good with lumber? None of that. As as I read this chapter, I made highlights of all the different types of folks that helped. Right off the bat, we see that the high priest, he was in on the action. He didn't stand back and say, well, I'll say the prayers while you guys work. I'll make the sacrifices while you guys are doing. He jumped right in. He grabbed a hammer. He grabbed whatever tool they had at the time, and, and he joined the rebuilding efforts. There were goldsmiths and perfume makers. And if I had to guess, I would think that they were the butt of some of the jokes. Like, you sure you can handle this? You're, you've been over there making perfume all day. But they put the perfume down and they, they picked up tools. Rulers of different districts, like dignitaries that were even outside of the, the walls of Jerusalem, they came and joined this effort. There's one guy that he's mentioned by name, Shalom. And it wasn't just him. It said Shalom and his two daughters. And there's part of me that just wishes that they would have been named too because women then weren't treated like we hope women are treated today. But even his daughters were in on the action. The priests, the merchants, the everyday citizens. There are so many folks that just jumped in. They caught the vision of what God had put in Nehemiah's belly to rebuild these walls, to bring honor back to the city of Jerusalem, and they jumped in full bore. Now, I have to be honest. One of my favorite verses in this whole chapter is in 3 verse 5. It says, the next section was repaired by the men of Tekoa. Now, they just sound strong to me, the men of Tekoa, right? But get this, it says, but their nobles would not put their shoulders to the work under their supervisors. How would you have liked to be one of those guys? Like called out for all of history is basically being lazy. They would not put their shoulders to the work. And so as I read this, I realized the beauty of this passage is that it really forces many of us to realize that that we don't have to be an expert in something to be used by God. And I'll be honest, if we aren't careful, we can create this attitude that we can only do a few things and then Sometimes we can even get really good at hiding it behind some like holy lingo. Well, pastor, I would love to help set up the room for a special needs prom, but I don't have the gift of decoration. Let me just be honest with you. 
you don't have to have the gift of decoration to help set up a room for special needs prom. Because guess what? There's some people that are really good decorators and all they need you to do is roll out that eight foot table from the storage room and pop out the legs and set it up and then put a tablecloth on it. And while you go and get the next one, they can get to decorating because they are good at it. Well, pastor, I know that we're having a work day and you need some help painting, but I took that spiritual gifts thing when I went through partners in ministry. It said nothing about painting, nothing. Guess what? I hate painting. Like, I can't stand painting, but I could show you in five minutes how to use a roller because I've had to do it at times. And so sometimes we want to pigeonhole ourselves as these experts and say, well, I'm, I'm good at this and I'm good at that. And it's awesome. And it's beautiful when we get to plug you into your sweet spot and, and you get to serve in that. And so sometimes you get to serve in your sweet spot over here, but then we do this all hands on deck call and we say, we just need you to show up. If you have an able body and a willing spirit, we need you here because we can accomplish more with you, even though you're not particularly good at this thing than we can if you never show up at all. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want anyone recounting history and lumping me in with the nobles of the men of Tekoa. Oh yeah, that's Levi. He talked a good talk, but he was unwilling to put his shoulder to the work. No, thank you. I do not want to go in history as being one of those guys. And so it's important that we understand sometimes God is going to, he's going to require of us to accomplish his mission on earth, to move outside of areas that we are naturally gifted in or talented in, and, and even beyond things that we particularly enjoy, to accomplish something bigger than us, something for his kingdom. Second thing I want to pull out is that it Beyond just having to work outside of your comfort zone, it really does require that, that at times all of us just showed up. Just the sheer numbers can make a difference. They rebuilt this wall in just 52 days. And it was the, it was the sheer numbers of people that came out that made that happen. I, I remember the first time I heard the word synergy and don't ask me how, but I made it all the way to grad school before I, I heard this word synergy and began to understand what it was. But, but that's the truth. And this word comes from an old Greek word, uh, synergia, uh, which, meaning, which means work together. And I imagine most of you figured this out long before I did. But it's this idea that we can actually accomplish more when we're working together than we can as individuals. So if there are three people and you take three people and you let them work together on a project, they are going to accomplish more in a day's work than three individuals who are trying to accomplish the same thing in the same amount of time. There's an exponential production that happens that we can't do on our own. So a few weeks ago, uh, it, was, it was a Sunday, and I've never really known what it was like to have Sundays off, and I'm a part of a local uh, disc golf club called the Gainesville Chainhawks. So shout out to my Chainhawks. Um, I don't think any of you are watching, but just in case. And they had a project going on on a Sunday morning, and I thought, this is great. I, I, I watched the service online, uh, and I headed over to Northside Park off of 441, and the idea is that we wanted to build up... Uh, a pin position or a basket location because we throw our frisbees into these metal contraptions and it's a lot like golf. And so we, we wanted to make a nicer one. And it, it was just a beautiful thing seeing 20 plus people come out and accomplish something in about four or five hours that would have taken a single person probably a week or two to accomplish. Now, I have to be honest, when I got there, we didn't really have all the supplies that we needed. There was a bunch of people, but like one wheelbarrow. There was a bunch of people, but like three five-gallon buckets. And so as I was hauling wheelbarrows and five-gallon buckets full of sand, I began to wonder aloud, like, should we have just gone down to Sunbelt, like equipment rental, and just got a little skiff that would have moved all of this sand and this dirt from about 30 feet away over to where we needed it really, really fast? Because I'm all about efficiency. I'm all about, like, what's the fastest way to get this thing done? 
And if we had done that, we could have accomplished the same thing in a lot less time, but we would have missed out on some things. We would have saved time, but we would have missed out on the camaraderie and the unity that came from so many people working together uh, toward a unified and a shared vision. And so now there's a couple dozen guys and gals that when we play that hole, we can tell the story of the day that it was built. We, we can tell you how hot it was and we can tell you how we didn't have the right equipment and, and we can tell you how beautiful it is because we played a role in doing that. And so beyond just getting it up there, like there, there's a story to be told and there's, there's 20 or 30 people that, that have this sense of pride that they had something to do with making our course better. And so the same thing happens when we come together as the people of God to accomplish something big. It could be a physical project. It could be a call to prayer and fasting. It could be a church sermon series study where we all come together and we commit ourselves to the greater good of the kingdom of God. Because church, we are always better together. And I know that it can seem strange to preach a sermon about being better together when we have literally been separated like we have never been separated before. But I think it's right on time as we look forward to coming together in the weeks and months ahead to remember that we are always, always better together. Let's pray. Father, I thank you uh, for the ways in which you put vision in, in people's hearts and then allow them to share that with others. And then they grasp onto that and they accomplish something just magnificent that, that we're reading about thousands and thousands of years later. Father, I, I thank you for that. I thank you that you don't allow us to just exist in our comfort zone, but, but you pull us out beyond that and you push us into areas that... Uh, require us to trust you. And God, help us to remember that that we're not lone rangers out there, that, that we are in this kingdom of God thing together. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Grace Church, as you go in God's grace and peace, may you know in the deepest places of your soul that we are always, always better together.